All right, uh, last video. Uh, I guess I put out there that, uh, you know, I bought an older truck and, uh, you know, I went a different route than most guys go, you know, low mountain route or whatnot. Or, or you know, leasing onto a carrier and doing the lease purchase. So, I'm gonna go around this older truck and just pretty much show you what, uh, what $24,000 buys you at a small used truck dealership with 625,000 miles on the dash, uh, pre-emissions. Uh, it's an international, uh, 4,900. Uh, it's not a cream puff. Um, I probably overpaid, definitely. I could have probably paid cash for it, but I want to have some money sitting in the bank. Uh, at least in the business account for for um, breakdowns and repairs and such that came up uh, just to you know make sure when I'm on the road you don't get screwed uh, you know always save up for a rainy day so I want to go out here I want to talk about the truck talk about some problems I had right off the bat with it um, that I should have checked uh, it was just oddball things that you wouldn't think of for a truck with 620,000 miles on it. They come up to an older truck like this. First thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to check the dipstick. That if it's at a dealership, it's going to be clean. So most likely it's you know already been changed. So don't even think about oil samples. Uh, best thing you can do if you can make an appointment now with COVID and everything to get into a dealership or Cummins or Detroit repair facility or anything and have the truck checked over first thing is the best bet especially with these older ISX's this is a 2006 well actually the engine is a 2005 actually 2005 CM870 ISX these like to have cam problems uh, they like to wear the cams out so luckily I just had an overhead ran on this and the cams are perfect or with inspect and everything's great uh, first thing though, what you're going to do is when you go to a dealership, truck dealership, and get a truck with, let's say, any amount of mileage on it, let's say with emissions, 400,000, wow, this cap's on there, good, 400,000 miles plus, you're going to let the truck run for a while, probably about a good half hour, get it warm, maybe after you come back from your test drive, you're going to pull the, pull the cap off, you're going to check to see how much blow buys out of there. Now, when I first bought the truck, there was barely any blow-by. Now, now that it's been running around, uh, you know, it definitely has some blow-by. But with a truck with 600,000 miles on it, you're going to get a little bit. Best way to test if it's a lot of blow-by is if you put this cap on just like that without turning it and leave it on. If it doesn't blow the cap off, you're, you know, you got, you're doing good. And you don't have an engine that's ready to take a crap. So, uh... Now, when you're looking at the engine, you know, like I said, check the engine, check this, check the coolant and everything. Uh, see, a lot of times these trucks will be power washed and cleaned and painted up. I got a little tiny pinhole leak somewhere on the radiator. As you can see, this is all coolant. This is after 400,000 miles and I've had to put, uh, not after 400, this is after 4,000 miles and I've had to put about half a gallon of coolant in the truck. So there's somewhere, somewhere there's leaking coolant out of the radiator. You ain't gonna know that most likely unless it's a pretty decent leak if you're looking at the truck uh, so you know check the belts check to make sure your pitman arm and your uh, linkages are all right uh, check your steering linkage make sure that's all tight of course tires and brakes make sure none of your lines are cracked or anything pretty much do an actual proper pre chip uh, as you can see, it's got new good brakes and everything on it. Uh, just pretty much walk around the truck, check the tires and everything. Uh, if you can, if there's enough fuel in it when you go to buy it, make sure you check the fuel gauge. Um, check the exhaust system all the way around. Make sure you don't have any goofy stuff like that, like a pinched exhaust. I didn't really take a look at that uh, when I picked the truck up. I should have. I'm sure it doesn't help the turbo much. Uh, check the tires for wear, check, you know, bubbles, cuts, all the good stuff. Uh, now, one thing I didn't check, like I said, I usually check when I buy a truck. 
since this is technically the first real truck I'm purchasing for myself, uh, it's not no lease purchase or anything, is uh, put the truck in gear, leave the brake on and give it, leave the hood open and give it a little, you know, just let it in gear slightly and see if the engine jumps. If the engine jumps, you need motor mounts. This truck needed motor mounts. It really needed one, but I took it into a shop and told them it needed motor mounts and they ended up replacing all the motor mounts for and doing an overhead on it for about it was twenty nine hundred dollars like I said when you go buy a truck make sure you got money left after you buy it I don't care if the things two years old or 18 years old make sure you have money sitting in the bag before you buy it check the coolant and everything uh, big thing is check all these little heater hoses make sure like these make sure they're nice and pliable I ended up actually having a hose pop right up there on the way home from Texas to Pennsylvania. Here the hoses, the hoses were nice and shiny so I just assumed they put, you know, armor on them and made them look all nice. But here they, uh, they, uh, were corroded inside. It looks like this tr truck had a, uh, what do they call it, a leaky injector, uh, leaky injector cup. And the uh, the cup leak uh, diesel into the coolant at one time, and it will eat and mess up and swell every rubber hose on the engine. And if it's not done in time, it can also mess up the seals on the liners. So make sure you, uh, if you ever encounter that, put all new hoses on, preferably silicone, and flush the flush the radiator and the whole engine out with like Dawn dish soap and whatnot. But that's pretty much uh, my little tutorial for uh, checking out a truck when you're buying a cheap, older, used truck. Uh, oh, yeah, here, I guess make sure you grab the drive line. Make sure all the brake canisters are tight. Like I said, go around and check all the tires. Check all the lights. Make sure the big things, make sure the heat works on defroster. And make sure the air conditioner works. I mean, you can buy a truck without air conditioning, sure, but, you know, <laughs> if you're going to pay for it, why bother? You know, not making sure. Um, check to make sure there's no cracks on the windshields. You know, a little crack when you buy it can turn into a big crack a few bumpy roads later. Uh, man, can't really think of much else. Oh, uh, here, another thing. I need to check the batteries. Check the batteries. These are all new, but make sure they got hold downs. If DOT really wants to be a dick, they can get you for that. And why bother paying for something that won't pass DOT inspection, you know, at least correctly? Uh, other than that, basically expect to pay when you buy your first truck. Uh, especially an older truck or just actually just any truck in general expect to pay a high interest rate especially right now because the way the market is a lot of banks suspect that eventually this market's going to drop and <laughs> and uh, yeah also check your fiberglass hood the, this was all nice but as you can tell things weren't repaired properly they were using bondo or whatnot you can't repair fiberglass with bondo obviously like I said they lipstick this thing up they covered up all the fiberglass repairs and did a little paint job on it they're all coming out this is after 4,000 miles yep like I said I got ripped off a little bit but um, I'm not too too worried about it like I said as long as the truck looks nice when it's going through a scale when DOT walks up to it that's a different story but the truck makes me money I pay I only pay like $825 a month for it for three years so hopefully in that time it holds up real good but hey if you want you can go get $2,000 a month payments on a emissions truck pay another I don't know let's see what I what I was I depend on that other lease truck I was leasing 
I went through about $20,000 a year in emissions problems with it. On top of uh, just about $2,000, over $2,000 a month I was paying for it. So, and of course, you know, any little bit of warranty that's left, it never covered anything. <coughs> now, like I said, the interior looks half decent. It is what it is. Apparently, apparently, uh, the odometers like the plastic piece on the odometer like the fall off here in like 4,000 miles, 5,000 miles. But, like I said, you get what you pay for. <laughs> you can go out and buy a 2014, 2015 truck, put 10,000 down on it. Have about a 23%, 24% interest rate unless you get lucky enough and you can find a local bank or uh, credit union or whatnot that'll be willing to actually take a chance on you and and uh, finance you. My case, I couldn't really do that. I have about a, like a 630 credit score. I had a divorce about seven years ago. There's still yeah, like a few little things still showing up on it, but nothing to cause any problems. I have credit cards and whatnot, but I still couldn't get approved, at least from a dealership, like a Freightliner dealership or an Arrow, for actual financing. Um, but, you know, it, it, there's two ways to do it. You can either buy an older truck that, if you're lucky, you aren't going to have any problems the first year, or if you're unlucky... Hey, you, you could probably have the engine blow up, but you know what? You could buy a 15 truck and, you know, whatnot. Um, Peterbilt, uh, Kenworth, you name it. And uh, let's say you buy one with an ISX in it. Well, let's say you're driving down the road and you got your 500,000 miles on it or 400,000 miles on it. And you notice the oil pressure starts slowly dropping. You're like, what's going on? And then you pull over and you shut the truck off and it won't start up again. Surprise! You just witnessed ceramic pistons or whatever they are in the fuel pump decide to take a crap and ruin your ISX. Congratulations, you just got what, a couple thousand miles out of your truck and now you need an engine. It can happen. It can happen to anybody. You know, be prepared for those things. Yeah, I was prepared, well, I'll put it this way, I went and had the truck uh, checked out by a mechanic that I wasn't really familiar with uh, over by where I lived, and he told me that, the. well, I told him I just needed an engine mount replaced. Well, he checked out the whole truck like I asked him to, and he's like, hey, he's like, you uh, you need a thrush bearing. He's like, I can, I can move your crank. Well, obviously, he must have had a lot of trucks he was repairing that day or whatnot. Either that or he smoked uh, a crack pipe or something. Because um, I went and took the truck then to uh, Ashland Diesel, which they are a certified cat and Cummins repair shop. They rebuild the engine and everything uh, out in Ashland, PA. Uh, a lot of older guys over there, well, well versed, well knowledge. Um, Took it over there and they checked the uh, the end play for the, the thrush bearing on the crank. They said my crank don't move at all. They said it's right with inspect. So I figured I was gonna have to put a used engine in this thing. I had the money. I I'd pay, I had specifically about another fifteen thousand dollars set aside for this truck. Fifteen thousand. Uh, after after I paid the five thousand dollars down, so I had total twenty. I put five down. I had another 15 left over. So I was prepared to go out and throw a used engine in it. Um, off talking real quick, since I just thought about it. Make sure when you go buy a truck, depending on where you're running, like if you're going to run 80 uh, into Pennsylvania and stuff, make sure you get the uh, spec sheet for the truck. I bought this truck. It's a 10-speed direct drive, and it's got 264 rears in it. Sure, this truck gets really good fuel mileage. Not so much going up through the hills and little mountains of Pennsylvania and whatnot. It it does okay for fuel mileage. 
Uh, I'm still getting around like six. Uh, but it's four ways on, 45 mile an hour, climbing the, you know, climbing the hills. This ain't no, you know, this ain't no powerhouse, uh, at least with those gears in it. So make sure you do a spec sheet and check it. Now back to what I was saying. Uh, so yeah, so I had the crank checked out. And um, it was good. So I had them do the engine mounts. I had them do all them all. Because the ISXs, they like to leak from the front and rear case. The rear case is the flywheel case. Uh, it was leaking a little. I don't know, it stopped leaking now. They didn't do it. But at least I don't think they did it. <laughs> but uh, at least the rear case ain't leaking that that much or not at all barely I don't have any oil tripping on the truck but they uh, they did all my engine mounts that and like I said the overhead it cost about like 20 you know about 28 50 somewhere around there 100 so like I said have money set aside if you buy an older truck don't go don't you have 15 grand saved up don't go out and buy a 13 5 truck you know don't don't go do it if you have 15 grand you're better off if you can if your credit's good try to put five grand down on on an emissions truck uh, unless you can find like this something like this that you can get decent mileage older with less emissions on it or no emissions at all and get financed for it if you can do that go ahead and do that but if you you can't find a pre-emissions truck uh, I'd recommend staying away from pack car uh, only reason the truck I had, I didn't have any problems really engine related. It was all wiring and emissions. And you are 9 out of 10, unless you find a unicorn in the, you know, the needle in the haystack or whatnot, you are going to have to go to the dealership to use Davy 4, Davy System 4, to do any real code reading and, and diagnosis to it. So you're pretty much stuck at the dealer. So that usually takes, you're usually looking at just a week, a couple days, three or four days to have it diagnosed, and let alone repair. So you, know, you truck your truck in, you're going to lose it for a week or two. Plus the cost, it's going to be astronomical. Like I said, prepare to pay $20,000 a year sometimes if you get one of those trucks for emissions repairs and wiring. Until you get it figured out, you know, it's, it's going to be bad. So, like I said, if you end up getting an emissions truck, and let's say you got ten grand still in your pocket, you put five down on it. Um, make sure, make sure the DPFs got done. Make sure things have been done. Make sure um, if you look uh, on uh, Vahir Raz's, if you're looking at an ISX or just about any truck, I would do it. Do a do a EGR tune up. Check, replace all the sensors. Replace all that. Sure, it's going to cost some money. But it's going to cost you more money when you break down on the side of the road or need towed somewhere. And you're stuck going to, you know, a dealership. Not your local dealership or your local repair guy. Just some random dealership in whatever state you're in or whatnot. It's going to cost you more money. And then you're going to have to get a hotel and et cetera, et cetera. And yeah. So that's what can make and break anybody their first year. Leased on or authority or whatnot. Um, I... Um, I'm actually I'm not going to talk about authority and leasing and whatnot. I'll do that in another video because it's already too damn long. This video, I just, I just like to be very thorough and in depth, uh, especially when you're talking to people that get the glamour in their eye of that they're going to go out and get this truck, put five down on it, and their first week they're going to be making ten thousand dollars right now. <laughs> you, you could do that, or you can go out and. You can do your second load and piston can come out of the bottom or radiator hoses break or radiator cracks, what whatnot. You could have all kinds of other issues. Uh, DPF decides to clog up. Uh and it's 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 a crapshoot sometimes. Sometimes it's luck, sometimes it's being prepared. Uh it can be a little bit of both. But uh you know check your P's and Q's. Make sure, make sure if you're going to go into this with only like twenty or fifteen thousand dollars, make sure you check and double check the truck you're buying. Uh, make sure you have a plan. Make sure you're going to a good carrier. You know that that'll be my next video. I'm going to talk about carriers, authority, and and whatnot and uh, percentages.
unless unless you're getting value out of it, I would not go into a carrier that is above that is taking twenty percent of your gross. You know, twenty five would be my limit. I know Landstar, but you know what? I think Landstar takes way too much off of you that you could get at other places. Sure, you might have dedicated. You, you, you got a lot of dedicated brokers. That's what you have. Dedicated brokers that have customers at Landstar. So, uh, like I said, I'm not going to go off that route. Uh, I'm already already going off as it is too much ranting. Alright, so I'm going to make another video either here today or tomorrow. Uh, depending on when my hours come back. And uh, it's going to be about authorities and, and uh, authorities, brokers, and you know, leasing onto a carrier and whatnot, and lease purchase, and all that. I guess I'll talk about that. Like I said, I, uh, I am not the know-it-all. I'm just some guy here that decided to start making videos finally that has time to, that actually went out and got his own truck and wasn't doing lease purchase. I could have made the videos back then, but I was I was like on a dedicated account. It really wasn't that glamorous, and uh, it, you know, it, it, I can't say I wouldn't say that a leech person driver can't really inform anyone what to do, but they they definitely have a handicap before they start talking about purchasing trucks and what you can because you know what if that truck breaks and you don't have the money, most likely. Unless the carrier don't like you, you personally, they will help repair and pay and do stuff for that truck. You'll be in the hole, but you, you'll keep going. So, big difference when you uh, got your own thing and either you're leased to a carrier of your authority. So, that said, I'll quit ranting. Uh, if you like watching these videos, rather boring. Hopefully the content, I'll try to make this better here. The more practice I get, I'll go on. Yes, this is orange. It's left in the back of the reefer, and I'm going to put it in my water and drink it. <laughs> uh, but like I said, uh, you know, like, subscribe, you know, try to get me over that magical number so I can actually make money again with these videos since they took my demonet they demonetized me after they changed all the things back when I was at Prime and whatnot. So, uh, you know, if you want some information from a guy that's been out here since 2013, you know, stay tuned. Keep watching. You know, stay safe out there. See you.